Welcome to the Scottsdale Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Haygood. Tis the season to be giving. This is one of my favorite months because I love giving back, as you all know from listening to this podcast or reading the magazine, Scottsdale City Lifestyle. This is what I love to do, connecting our community, bringing awareness to all these amazing organizations and stuff like that in town. So one of the people I'm excited to always bring back every month is Jeremy Mueller from State Farm Insurance. Jeremy, I'm two things I want to talk to you about today. Number one, you all give back a lot. In fact, me and April, your office manager, and some of the guys that work for you are always asking me, Alicia, bring more organizations to us, bring more to us. Like we want to get involved. What are some things that you do to give back personally and professionally here in Scottsdale? Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me as always. Um, you know, it's grown. So as we've gotten bigger and added more capacity and team members, and it's just something that's very important, not just to me, but to, to everyone that works. So we'll do anything and everything. Y'all really it, do. Yeah. yeah so it, it runs the entire spectrum. Um, I mean, I mean, we've done stuff where I, I think we sponsored the Asian festival yeah. last year or something. <laughs> so there's, there's stuff that, that's, that not necessarily in my wheelhouse, yeah. but maybe I have a team member that it's important to them. So we will stand behind that. Um, and it's something cool because I never thought we'd be able to do this. Like we rarely say no. Like it's I have true. a hard time saying no. <laughs> that is true. I'm a good, I'm a good person to date because I don't say no. <laughs> um, I love that because it's very true. I didn't even think about that, though. It's right. Like, you personally don't have a connection to the Asian community, but someone in your office says they brought this to your attention. You're like, let's do it. Exactly. And everything, y'all have your hands and everything. But that's why, I mean, just because you're born and raised here, it's still growing. You're still meeting people. You're still making sure that you and everyone at your agencies are involved in this community because it's so important to you, and I love that. It's a good way to be known without shoving it down someone's throat, yeah. too. I mean, there's only so many advertisements you can put out there. So it's a, it's a good way to give back but still kind of be proud present, yeah. which is in my business is the most important part of it. The second thing I love about you is you love to eat like I do. And there's so many amazing restaurants um, going on. One of them that we're going to feature next is Chef Corey with Course Restaurant. It's amazing. You haven't tried it yet as of this recording. I know that. But where are some of your favorite places to go to? And we got Thanksgiving coming up as well. So that's another whole feast and it's in a beast of itself. Right. Well, what's great about Scottsdale is you have this variety of restaurants. So like for me, I'm, I'm more mid, like midline. Like I like casual where you can go in casual, you can go in a business. Yeah. doesn't matter. Um, but that said, you've got some really good fine dining here for those special occasions too. And you have Michelin star restaurants. You've got, um, you know, some extremely high end places that are very difficult to get in right now. And they're all, they keep coming. Yeah. Like they keep, they keep coming. So I think Scottsdale has put itself on the map. I mean, it used to be you'd have to go to Las Vegas to hit so some of these chefs, right? I was about to say, chefs, usually it's right? Vegas, but now I feel like the Vegas chefs are coming Vegas to us. Vegas chefs are coming to us, and you don't have smoke, you don't have casino, you don't have the, the you know the nasty hangover the next day. So it's, it is nice that it's you have It's debatable, but I uh, figured much, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A nice bottle of wine and a couple of cocktails at dinner, you, know, you never know. Right, true, true. <laughs> um, another thing is Thanksgiving is coming up this month. What are some of your favorite Thanksgiving memories, a favorite food item that you have to have at yeah, dinner? Yeah, so, so as you get older, the adults on this podcast, which most of most of us are, are would appreciate, like Christmas, you export more than you import, yes. right? Like you just, it tends to be a, a, a holiday you spend quite a bit, bit of money on. Yeah. Thanksgiving's great because, yes, that can happen, but it's also just more – there's no presents involved, which is so nice um, because it's just more – you're getting together with friends, family, yeah. whatever, who is ever close to you. Um, and it really it's a little focuses. bit down, like the downtime, that Friday off is yeah. great. Um, the, having the Thursday off is great. So it's a good four-day precursor to the craziness of Christmas that you blink and it's here. And, and I love – two things with that. It is a really, you do focus on being together, right? That is what its purpose is, is being thankful. You have people, family and friends, you know, to share the table with and stuff like that. It is a precursor to like the next six weeks of ridiculousness, right. unnecessarily ridiculousness too, by the way. Um, my kids, I thought I threw away, but hadn't yet found the Amazon catalog that came in the mail. So what is with that? I got it too. I got like four of them. Got them to the office. I got them to the house. And do you remember the Toys R Us catalogs oh, that we yeah. used to get when we got yeah. the circle, yes. circle, yeah. lots of? I was, you know, I'll 
brag on my kids for a minute, lots more X's than circles in this magazine. So that's cool. I'm winning that way. I'll see what I, I can I do. I can tell I'm getting old because I was looking for nieces, nephews, and I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea. What I have on. zero idea what any of these franchises are sometimes, some of them. So I, I'm with you. We're fine. I'll, I'm I'm totally admitting that I'm a geriatric millennial at this age, and I'm fine with that. I feel confident in that. I don't care about the riz, the drip, or whatever else these kids are talking about in right. life. <laughs> right. Um, do you have a favorite item at Thanksgiving, like you have to have this thing on the table. I'm a baker, so I'm not a chooser okay. on it. So it's kind of whatever, whatever we're cooking or if we go out, whatever, serve, okay. whatever. Serve. I mean, I have to kind of have turkey that that's day. Fair. Okay. Some people don't. So that's a fair. Uh, um, I'm but, a pumpkin pie. Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm not a pie guy. That is like my one item. I have to have my family really messed up when I was about 13 years old and forgot it. I found a random grocery store. We went on Thanksgiving night and got it. Took a bite. I did not realize it was frozen. Oh, so wow. Live and learn. My yeah. parents have never made that same mistake twice. You know, <laughs> Alicia, when in doubt, hire out. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> See, now this is how I live my life. That's not what my parents were doing growing yeah, up. <laughs> I just, some of that stuff, it's just easier. And we've got the, the great restaurants slash grocery stores to that it. take care of that stuff. I'm I'm a small and mighty for Thanksgiving. That's how I like to feel. I don't need a massive amount of people. I like my little foursome. I can wear sweatpants, eat yep. good food, That's watch good football, it. and be done with my day. Yep. I love it. All right. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to have Chef Corey from Course Restaurant. Go ahead and call Jeremy Mueller. Everything's wrapping up for the year. Figure out what you need to do for next year. Get prepared. Um, you know, tragedies always happen during the holidays, too, with Christmas lights and stuff like that. So make sure you have all the coverage you need to stay safe. Awesome. Jeremy, thanks so much. Thank you so and much. happy holidays. When it comes to protecting you, your family, and all your assets, you need to have someone that you can trust, and that's Jeremy Mueller of State Farm Insurance. Jeremy Mueller has lived in Scottsdale his whole life. How can anyone else know your needs more than someone who's been here and seen it all? Jeremy and his team are always ranked in the top percent at State Farm. He cares, he's knowledgeable, and most importantly, he's always available. Don't believe me? Give him a call at 480-515-5223 or find him at jeremymuller.com. An architect designs and builds. So does a chef. Different materials, different outcome, but same brain when it comes to Chef Corey Uphold of Course Restaurant. Chef Corey thought he was moving to Arizona to be an architect, but after a meal at Wright's at the Biltmore, he went from a farm boy in Illinois calling himself your typical meat and potato guy to a student at a culinary school. Chef Corey never knew how food could really enhance an experience and taste can all change the course of your life. So now he's an award-winning chef, both nationally and locally at Course Restaurant right here off of Scottsdale and Shea. And if you haven't been there yet, well, this is the episode that might just get you over the edge to go ahead and make that reservation today. He's also our cover story for the Scottsdale City Lifestyle for the October issue. So be sure to go check that out. And we have him at the table today. So Chef Corey, welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. I will say I literally am a little drooly inside because, like, I know what your meals are capable of. So even having you in my presence, I'm hungry. Oh. Um, but let's just talk, like, they are delicious. You are an Illinois small-town farm boy. Mm -hmm. You came down here to be an architect. How did food literally change your life? Yeah, I mean, it was crazy because I always knew I wanted to be an architect, like in high school and everything. Um, I even did like six years of math and four years of high school just to get the calculus, just because uh, I love math and everything wow. like that, just just to get that out of the way. But uh, when I did come out here, though, like, you know, I, as I grew up, as you said, like just very meat potatoes, very off our garden, yeah. off our farm type stuff. So I grew up very organic before it was cool to be organic, you know. Uh, but it was more like the sense when I got out here, like I didn't, ex I didn't expect to see food as more of an experience, like a dining experience, as opposed to just like nourishment. Um, but when I went to the rights at the Biltmore for the first time, like it opened my eyes to like a new world of like, you know, food is actually art and not just, you know, something or substance that you eat. So it was amazing. You, I didn't even think about this. So you just said that you really did take your childhood of eating fresh, mm -hmm. eating what you grew. So that brings into your seasonal, yes. you know, pace of how you cook at course did you even realize that you were doing that or that's just kind of how you have always eaten? Honestly, I never realized I, until I thought about it yeah. after a while. I'm like, okay, I mean, that's why I'm kind of like obsessed with the seasons. Like, you know, I'm excited, like, you know, during spring when the better tomatoes come out or, yeah. you know, when it's hot out here, we're excited for, you know, summer or winter squash to come about. 
but it's, it's like that idea, like, you know, that mother nature is like the best menu writer yeah. there is, you know? Uh, so we just kind of follow her guidelines and, you know, just make what we can. And then, you know, each, each year it's, you know, the same bounty on summer or spring right. with the list of ingredients. So, so we just try to like, as chefs, like teach ourselves like new different flavor combinations, new techniques, just ways to make it more interesting, you know, for ourselves in the back as a culinary team. But you know, obviously it translates to the guests. Well, I love that because it's an art form. Like mm -hmm. what you do truly is artistic in a way. So I feel like you're still creating. You're, you are still designing. Mm -hmm. You are still, you know, doing those everything on the drawing things out before you played it and stuff like yeah. that. You really do make sure that we use our senses when mm -hmm. we come to your restaurant. Talk about the importance of using your sight as well as taste and as well as everything to really taste the meal that you have created for us. Yeah, I mean, with a, as a chef, it's our number one responsibility to make delicious food. But I, like, if you take it a step further, like as a culinary artist, you know, art's at the end of the word. So it's like you have to be artistic. I feel, you know, with the scope of food that we do, you have to be artistic with it as well. It has to be visually playful and fun and beautiful to look at, I, I feel. I mean, of course, it's, you know, it has to taste good. That's, right. our, that's our number one responsibility <laughs> as a chef. But, I mean, to us, like, it just, it, it has to look amazing. You know, it, it's just a respect issue of, you know, not just the type of food that we do, but it's respect to the, the ingredients, to the farmers that grew it, purveyors, to everyone that brought it to the back door, you know. You take something as basic as meatloaf, mm -hmm. fish and chips, something mm -hmm. that's on your menu right now is a goldfish, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. So it's still your basic childhood farm boy, kind of what we used to eat, but you make it into this next level as an understatement. Where do you find your inspiration and ideas from? What do your team do? I mean, a lot of the things, yeah. I mean, we definitely like to play a lot of nostalgia. Like, you know, the, like you said, the childhood thing. Like I, I still, as a grown up, still watch Scooby-Doo like at least <laughs> once a week, you know, it's just like, I love that part of my childhood. And that's one thing, like, I just never want to get rid of. Yeah. Like, you got to have those scenes, those moments of like, you know, serving a push pop with caviar on top. Cause you know, when, the, when you're a child, you had push pops, you right. know, it's just, or otter pops that are flavored different. Like it just, I think it's just a, you know, when a guest get it and they taste it, you know, it, of course they, okay. Oh, they're satisfied. But at the same time, it gives it like, they give that little smirk where it's like, okay, I, I know this. Right. So I, I love that part of dining. I think it also, if you think about it, we when we see something, we have a preset mind of what it might taste like, right? Mm -hmm. So when you bring back in like the goldfish or the push pops that you just said, you are thinking one flavor in your head because of the sight and that memory, you know, muscle coming in. And then you taste it and it is so different mm -hmm. than what you expect. It's like creating a new memory for a childhood that you had. Exactly. And it's kind of like that motto of like, you know, under promise over delivery. Yeah. Like I love that motto. And that's why I like a lot of our menu writing. Like if you look at our menus, it's very simple. It's just, you know, it was, it was a pork shoulder yeah but it doesn't like, dive into exactly how we prepare it or it'll say tomato and that's it like but that's that whole under promise over deliver thing where you know when people get it okay and then they, they taste it sometimes it's going to taste familiar but it's going to be very very extremely different you yeah know? um especially with like uh you know like you said meatloaf we've been doing theme dinners on sundays so we're trying to bring that like you know typical thing and just making it not so typical. Yeah, so. I love it. Let's talk about getting to culinary school. You've now been on the Food Network. You've mm -hmm. won tons of local awards here in the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. What did you see yourself 20 years ago as just Corey to where you are as this renowned chef here in Arizona that's going to continue to grow within the past 20 years, really? Yeah, I mean, definitely in culinary school. I mean, before culinary school, I never thought I was going to be a chef whatsoever. Like, I Did you cook at all as a kid? Like, was that no, part of your family thing? Not really. I mean, I was always around it, you know, kind of helping with some items. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's not really the act of cooking that I was really into. It was more like the, the creation aspect that really got me yeah. into food. You know, whether it's, you know, you know, just the visual aspect of just building something, but then also, you know, the flavor combinations and everything like that. Uh, that's what really intrigued me about it. But when I was going to culinary school, like I knew I wanted to do really well and I knew I wanted fine dining. I didn't want to go okay. to do, you know, I mean, I love burgers. That's why I love to eat the right. most. Yeah. I'm but, like to say everyone loves it. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, but that's just not what I wanted to do that's fair. for my career. 
Uh, but like, I, I just always knew I wanted to do as best as I possibly could. Cause my grandpa, she, he, he always told me like, he's like, you know, whatever you do, you just got to do it well. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was always a model that also stuck in my head. So um, I just kept pushing to do, you know, the best that I could do. And, you know, when also, you know, after culinary school, you know, I worked at some good places, but I also taught at the Le Cordon Bleu as well. So like that opened my eyes too to like teaching. So that's what, you know, really drove me to like, you know, train the people around me the you know the same philosophy that i have which is what just do do, do you. your best mm-hmm. do, do your you best. and if it's not if you don't like it then no one else is gonna like it yeah you know even if it tastes great you know if there has to be some tweaks so like if it doesn't look good aesthetically you, you just change it yeah so. i love that you have a small but mighty team behind you, of course, mm-hmm. restaurant. Talk about them because I'm a firm believer we don't do anything alone. You praise your team. You make sure that they're out and seen, yep. you know, and, and I so appreciate that about you. I do the same thing with my team as well. Yep. Talk about them because you do need to surround yourself with those like-minded skills and, and um, you know, ability level as well. Yep. Uh, well, first and foremost, like our sous chef, Luis Soto, is beyond amazing. Uh, he actually, I met him when I was teaching culinary school. He okay. was actually a student. And then when I went to Atlas Bistro in 2014, um, he, he was kind of intrigued to come in, but it wasn't until 2016 when I needed a sous chef. And then he came in and applied, and I, I remember him from culinary school. And, and he did extremely well. He was very disciplined, very talented, uh, but he's just been with me ever since, since 2016. Wow. Yeah, he's been with me for a long time. Uh, just a great kid. Um, and then we have Antonia Khan. She's our pastry chef. So I actually met her when I was at um, Tarbell's back in like 2014. Okay. Or actually 2013. And um, so when I started to open up course, like I kind of knew she was back in the valley because she was abroad for quite some time. And uh, so I asked her that, you know, the, when we're getting ready to hire people, I'm like, would you be interested? And she said, yeah. Yeah. Um, she's more of a baking background and loves her pastries, but she's like, you know, I will need some help with plating and stuff. But her 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 recipes, her techniques are flawless. She's amazing. Can you bake? I can. Okay. Actually. Because some chefs can't, right? Like, yeah. I, I can cook, but I cannot bake. I mm-hmm. can't even buy the right box mix. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> like, I am that bad. Yeah. Um, so I was, I'm curious, like, can you bake? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. At Atlas, we did all of our own pastries. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I actually love doing pastries. And that's, that is patience. Mm-hmm. A lot of patience and, and skills yep. to be a baker. It is. And yeah. pastry chef. And I just like, I mean, because there's so many different techniques that you you can't do with savory that you can do yeah. with pastry. Yeah. So that's why I, I love, I do love that. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Who else is on your team? And then Nick Padua. Uh, mm-hmm. So Nick, I also met, he's our general manager. I also met him at uh, Tarbell's as well. So he was the assistant manager at Tarbell's at the time I was there. And I met him and we've been connected ever since, you know, always talking. We haven't worked together since then, but until, you know, the opening of course, you know, I definitely wanted him. He's got a huge insane wine knowledge yeah uh, which was obviously been hugely beneficial to the course uh but yeah just a great team and then he brought in a lot of people he worked with in the past server wise front of the house and then uh, of course i brought in a lot of people that i know back of the house yeah um so together it was just you know beautiful marriage i so, love that let's go well let's dive in course restaurant mm-hmm. scottsdale and shea you're about a year and a half mm-hmm. almost into opening yep. Um, a really cool story about how this came about. You used to, you went into private chef yep. for parties, which, uh, cooked at a, um, house. Mm-hmm. Some of the guests there fell in love. Mm-hmm. I've talked to one of them. He jokingly said, Hey, let's start a restaurant. Yep. <laughs> he yeah. said, you served him some good food, served him too much wine. And he decided to be <laughs> yeah. a restaurant here. Yeah. It was crazy. And here we are. Yep. Yep. It was crazy. Yeah. Cause, uh, during, when I was at Atlas, uh, 2020 COVID hit. And then I transitioned into in-home dining. And then so mm-hmm. that continued for like three years. So I did uh, six, seven, eight courses in people's homes. Uh, it was so much fun. Like I built up a huge clientele, uh, just got to know a lot of people. Um, but then it was that, that wine function. Um, I already had some investors lined up and spot picked out, everything like that. And the two gentlemen there, uh, Christian and Brett Prezzuto, uh, they were there as guests, and, you know, at the end of the meal, they liked it a lot. And I said at the end of the meal to everyone, you know, please come, you know, hopefully course will be opening soon. But then they kind of pulled me aside at the end. They're like, you're opening a restaurant. 
they're like, we would like to help you with that. And they were, like you said, they were drunk. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, he says it. Yeah, yeah he, he was drunk. So I'm like, at the end of the, I'm like, are you, sh- are you sure? <laughs> you know, because they're like swaying when they were talking yeah. to me. And so I'm like, I'm like, all right. And then so when I went home though that night, I'm like, I didn't get my hopes up, you know. Right. Um, I was just still kind of sticking on course of what we had initially planned. And but at the the next day, the next morning, um, I think it was actually Monday morning. I got the email saying, or actually it was Sunday morning. Said, hey, let's meet for breakfast Monday morning. And I'm like, oh, they're sober now, so yeah. it must be. Or <laughs> well, at least I hope. I think they're yeah, sober. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah. So then, and, that's, and that's how it all started. Uh, they're they're great people. I've learned a lot from them. Um, they're both brilliant. They said they've learned a lot from you too, mm-hmm. and I think that just goes back to my first question of the team that you surrounded yourself yep. Yep. has set you up for success, and yep. that and that, and yep. it says a lot, you yep. know. They're amazing. Everyone's amazing. So you started this now. It's still fine dining. Talk mm-hmm. about how it works. Obviously, you listen to the name. It, it is a multi-course meal mm-hmm. in that sense. Yeah. So basically on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we actually take – well, actually, let me back up. On Friday and Saturday, we do a 10-course menu. And so that, like, it'll change uh, every three months or to every season. Um, it's, uh, it's always about 10 courses. Uh, but – we take that menu and then we actually dissect that on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. And it's a five course choice up. So, I mean, there's a lot of people during the weekdays that, you know, they don't want to be out that long to eat. So we, we just kind of, you know, took it down to five courses, short amount of time, uh, lower price point. It just made sense for everyone. Um, and then on, so then on Friday and Saturday is always our main 10 course menu. Um, but now on Sundays, now we actually, we were doing brunch for quite some time, but it was on Bastille Day. I had an idea that we do a French menu just to celebrate France, and so that Sunday we did it, and it was a big turnout. Yeah, where it was like, okay, maybe this is catching on to something that's you know beyond brunch. Um, so it's like we kind of took the idea of just doing, you know, we did France for like two weeks, I believe it was, and then we're like, okay, so let's do another menu. So we did a <coughs> diner menu. Where oh, we're fun. just taking classic diner stuff and yeah. then recreating them into like something that's more fine dining, more fun to eat. And so it's now the uh, program has, it's called uh, Of Course. So it's going to be on Sundays, every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. <coughs> and just a lot of fun. So that menu will actually change every month. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I like that because it's like themed based still. So that's still fun. See, like this is what I love about you, Chef Corey, is you have fun with this. It's Mm -hmm. fine dining, but it's still fun. It's still nostalgic. It's still an opportunity to, it's an experience all around from what you eat, from what you see to just walking in. I love the intimacy of the location. You have a beautiful patio, which Mm -hmm. really just kind of threw me off where it's at. Um, the details are really seen, mm-hmm. and I think it, that so much of what has elevated the experience when you go in there and Thank try you. it. So what is one of your favorite meals to cook at home outside the restaurant? I would have to uh, – I love making taco salad. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I do, like – I don't I, – I buy the packet season. Okay. I do you really? Like, yeah. I want it, like, <laughs> as simple as I possibly can get it. And just like iceberg lettuce and yeah. the whole thing. But I mean, I love making eggs though. Like I like scrambled eggs. Like I, I don't know. I'm obsessed with eggs. Okay. I eat them all the time. Do you do them fancy or are you just like a basic? No. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not too fancy. I mean, like, you know, for scrambled eggs, you just butter in a pan and yeah. whip them up. And then at the end though, when they're about scrambled, then I'll, I'll th- fold in a little bit of sour cream or whatever. Yeah. So it kind of brightens it up, but there's nothing, no, just salt. Okay. Basically. So I've read that's your favorite ingredient. One ingredient mm-hmm. you will always have is salt. Mm-hmm. What about salt is needed for every meal? Uh, I mean, just for, I mean, salt is the only thing that like really brings it out the the true flavor and profiles or brings it enhances for us. Yeah. Um, it's chemically, you know, it, but it's also not just that it's also just for, you know, curing, brining to preserving, uh, certain things, you know, uh, you know, just Preservation is a big thing for us as well. Yeah. Um, just to, you know, if we want some kind of tomato type product in fall, we'll, we'll cure it or something like that. Uh, but it's it's just one of those things that's it's needed. Let me ask you, Scottsdale is so known. We have a food scene here. I mean, people mm-hmm. fly in for it. We are definitely growing. Restaurants from Vegas are coming here and more. Mm-hmm. 
What do you think it is about Scottsdale and, and, you know, the other chefs in the area? Because I think one thing I love about, I know one thing I love about this community is we really do support each other. And you chefs yeah. are the same way, mm -hmm. supporting each other, growing with each other. You know, how does that work in your industry? Uh, like a lot of us, I mean, our chef and our it, like we're a very tight knit, like everyone knows each other. Yeah. Somehow they know each other. So, I mean, everyone, uh, you know, when we do a lot, of, a lot of our charity events or anything like that, we all try to get together to help support it. Uh, so very thankful for all the friends in the, in the culinary industry. Uh, but it's just like with Scottsdale itself, like I, the, the Valley just has so much room to grow and so many people keep moving here. And I mean, let's face, I mean, the summer of course is wretched yeah <laughs> but you know it's coming up soon especially on t this tuesday like the the temperatures just drop and then it's just gorgeous and yeah. beautiful i just think you know phoenix is becoming one of those places that people it's they're finding out it's not just always barrel you know tumbleweeds and scorpions uh -huh. and sand everywhere like there's there's a true beauty to arizona and i think that you know with so many people in this population growing you know so is the culinary community. Like there's better and better and more restaurants coming about that it's really elevating, you know, the, the culinary scene for Arizona. I love it. So what's next for you, Chef Corey? Uh, just kind of keep focusing on core. I mean, uh, there's always that thing. And I have just like writing recipes down, like a chef also writes down, you know, concepts for restaurants. Do you have like, you know, like the musicians always say, we're at a bar and I got a bev nap and like wrote something down. Is that yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, have, I have stuff everywhere at home. Like it's either on post-its or it's on like notepads yeah. or there's drawings everywhere. Um, Cause I always have to draw something first. Ah, uh, like literally a picture mm -hmm. of it to what it's going to look like mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. Like this, this dish here was drawn on paper prior. So, that's uh, so cool. Yeah. I mean, that's always like our basis. And then, then once we played it, like, then we see if the color scheme matches up. Like, is it too monochromatic or is it not? And then, yeah. It's just one of those I draw everything. I love it. So, so you're just going to keep going? Yeah. I mean, eventually I would like to open maybe a, a bar type, you know, place. But um, that's all eventual. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got some two investors I like to drink. Maybe you should talk to them. Let's They're do it. Great, great, <laughs> great wine, guys. Um, one of my last questions I love to ask everybody, it really teaches me about the community and stuff like that, is what is your favorite Scottsdale vibe? Skip my favorite Scottsdale vibe. I would have to say my favorite place, it's like eating wise. Whatever. What is like, I think Scottsdale has such a unique vibe. It's really funny because this is the one question that tricks everybody up. Mm hmm. It's Scottsdale's unique vibe. That's where we got the podcast name from it. So what's, when you think of Scottsdale, what's your favorite Scottsdale vibe? Anything? Uh, I would have to say like, it's definitely like, I mean, the restaurant scene, of course, but yeah. like one in particular, I love, love Hush. Like I love Dom. Chef Dom is one yeah. of my really good friends. Hush, I love that vibe of like, just, you know, it's always rambunctious in there. Everyone's close together. Um, it's just great, amazing food. Mm -hmm. I just, I love that vibe. I love it. See, mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, well, go check it out. Seriously, get your reservations now. It's coursestaurantaz.com. It is phenomenal. It really does like melt in your mouth kind of food and you never, you get to see a real drawing. So I love it because it is architecture and your culinary combined. Yep. Like you didn't leave it anywhere. Yep. Chef Corey, seriously, thank you so much for taking time out thank of your you. day. Congratulations on the huge success. And I know we'll be seeing more of you. Thank you. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll have the calendar of events. Buying a home can be scary and sometimes frustrating, but all of that can go away with the right realtor. And that's where Sean Shackleton with the Shackleton Group is here for you. Sean has over 25 years experience in real estate. She's here to get you what you want and won't settle for less. She's experienced, knowledgeable, and understands this market, which these days is always changing. Take the stress out of your next home purchase by calling Sean at 480-734-7277. You can also find her at theshackletongroup.com. Get ready, Scottsdale, because we are officially in the season of Thanksgiving and Christmas right around the corner, which means the city is decorated. We are here to celebrate everything. So let's start with Sunset Yoga at Desert Botanical Gardens. It's happening on November 21st from 6 to 7 p.m. Come and get your yoga on with the sunset surrounded by our beautiful natural trees, plants, and cacti here in town. Members reserve their tickets for $20, and non-members can get in for just $10 more. So it seems like a wonderful evening and beautiful weather to do it. King's Ranch Million Dollar Breakaway Rodeo is happening next week as their inaugural rodeo. So get your tickets to the one and only all women's breakaway rodeo happening at Westworld November 27th through 30th. There is a concert at the end of every event Thursday through Saturday with some up and coming country artists. So be sure to stay for that as well and, and enjoy the live music. 
As we talked about, the holidays are here, which only means one thing. Christmas at the Princess has officially begun. It starts the week of November 21st through January 4th. Go ahead and get your tickets early if they're not already sold out. The bigger dates will be sold out. I don't know how they do it, but each year it's going to be bigger and better. They have a longer ice uh, ride this year. We always have the Ferris wheel, delicious food. My kids always love the s'mores, so we'll be back for that. Either way, get your tickets now. Have a wonderful week, Scottsdale. Keep vibing, and I'll see you around town.